Lord, you are so amazing. Lord, you are so amazing. Lord, you are strong and mighty. Welcome back. We have been dealing with the issue of crime, and the prescription window is dedicated. Uh, this uh, this juncture, prescription window is dedicated to. Uh, unearthing and examining what really is causing this escalation of crime here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, on the other side of the break, uh, we did say that we can't isolate it down to a single factor. Now, that would be ideal, and in an ideal world, we deal with that one single factor, and voila, we have solved crime. Uh, we did say that there's a multiplicity of factors. So over the course of the next few weeks, we'll begin to look at um, the contributing factors to crime. This week, we want to take a quick look at poverty, uh, Truth be told, that there is a correlation between income levels, um, the poverty of an individual, the economic status of an individual, and his susceptibility to uh, get involved in crime, in criminal, criminal activities. Now, I have to be very careful because po poverty is such a relative term. Um, there, there's a man who can have a, an income of $100,000 a year and, and consider himself not well off or even poor. Uh, there's a man who might have an income of $100, uh, $100 a week and might consider himself to be not poor. And so we, poverty is a real a relative term. Sometimes we say that poverty, poverty is a condition of the mind. Having said that, therefore, that poverty is um, a relative um, concept, uh, my understanding of poverty is a situation where one does not have enough money to meet basic needs. That's all I'm going to say. To, to get beyond that in a more specific definition, I really am going to tie up my foot. A man is poor when he does not have enough resources to uh, provide himself and his family, those who depend upon him, uh, with the most basic need. Um, and before we begin to think it's only a, a money thing, uh, it, it, po poverty it, it manifests itself in many different ways. When, how do you know when you're poor? You're poor and, listen, you're hungry. And you know you really, really want a meal, um, whether it's some half ripe breadfruit with uh, some roast breadfruit with some stewed chicken. That sounds really good. But you, I mean, even then, a breadfruit, $8, and you know you can't even afford a breadfruit. I mean, here in 2013, you can't afford a breadfruit, you can't afford some chicken back or some chicken wings. Um, you know, and uh, you are wishing that you could, but you just don't have the resources to go do some stewed chicken and breadfruit. If a man gets to the point where he can go do some stewed chicken and breadfruit or some saltfish, um, you know, saltfish and bakes, listen, your hands are tied up like that economically. I might say that you are, you are on the verge of poverty or you're, you're poor. If, if um, you know, you're, you're in a housing situation where uh, water is leaking through the roof or you, you, you don't even have a house of your own or a place where you can rent uh, and, and, and be comfortable. Uh, you wish you could, but you don't. You have to shack up with somebody. You Sometimes you go from house to house. Somebody puts you out. You can stay two months here with somebody and then a three months here with somebody. But you really don't have the resources to get somewhere of your own, whether to buy, to rent, or to build. Uh, listen, you, you are poor. Um, if you can uh, get the basics for your schooling to go to your school or uh, to send your children to school, um, or to play certain recreation, um, sports, you can't buy the, the racket or you can't buy the bat and the ball and the, the soccer ball, the basketball, things that you just basic things in life. Just I consider recreation a basic thing in life. And if you can't even afford some basic things for your own recreation, it is likely that um, you are poor. Usually people, the, 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 the makeup of a man, the makeup of an individual is such that he's going to have some basic, basic needs. Uh, he's going to have these basic needs and the crave satisfaction. And he, generally, he would want to provide the means, the ways and means for him to have that satisfaction. But if he can't, feed himself, clothe himself, have some basic amenities in his home. If he can't feed himself, clothe himself, have the basics that he needs in his home, then there, there are going to be unmet needs. There are going to be uh, things stirring within him that he desires that he cannot, um, by his own um, energies and by his own resources, provide. Uh, and, and when a man is that poor, it's not that he doesn't have the needs. The needs are still there. They are unmet. 
And this theory of crime and poverty simply says that when your poverty doesn't, your, your economic situation does not allow you to meet all of your manifest needs, you're going to find some way to meet these needs. And some individual re resort to property crimes. I'm, I'm dealing here particularly with property crime because poverty is more associated with property crime than it is with white collar crime. White collar crime is really mostly associated with greed. Um, but uh, uh, poverty is more associated with uh, property crime, um, even more so than um, on with uh, violent uh, crimes. Well, you see, the economic reality here in St. Vincent is, is such that, let us say somebody who carries home an income of, let us say, about $1,800 a month. Um, if you have a mortgage, you're paying, what, $800 a month out of that. And then, or, or you're paying rent, four, or $500, depending on where you are and depending on the quality of your housing. Um, you're talking about one-third, 33% of your income already gone. By the time you pay um, VINLEC, with the fuel surcharge and all of the other things that are basically composite entities of your bill, uh, you know, sometimes you already paid a hundred. You have already paid a hundred dollars in light bill, one hundred and fifty dollars in light bill. Uh, Every time you pay CWSA and you 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 pay your gas, of course you have to cook. Um, you don't use electric stoves here generally. You have a gas stove, um, your cell phone or your 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 phone. Uh, um, by the time you add all of these bills together. Uh, $1,800 a month is just not a lot of money. It disappears. You, you still have clothing needs. You still have some of your children's needs. You still have health needs. You still have all of these things. You have been longing s for so long um, to just to get a little computer or a, a television or a, a cell phone um, so you can communicate with your children. All of these things, you just don't have the resources to take care of. There are, there are a lot of incentions, um whose income around $1,800 a month um, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars a month uh, really doesn't allow them um, to to put their hands on a lot of these things that you know form part of their basic needs. And um, the the theory is that the people are actually going to find ways and take other people's products and take other people's things. Um, so poverty is one of the factors that we think that drives uh, people. Um, to steal. Now Luke chapter 16, 19 to 25 has an interesting um, story that I would like you to read. If you have the time, just uh, pull it up and, and read it. It's this story of uh, a poor guy, Lazarus, in contrast with a rich, a rich guy. And uh, the, the inferiority of uh, um, his housing, um, he was actually shacking up or sitting out at the rich man's gate. So his, his, in comparison, his housing was inferior, his clothing, the rich man was in purple linen and he was in rags and the rich man was eating fantastic stuff and he, was eat, he would love to eat this stuff that fell off the table. So the, the nutrition of the guy, Lazarus, was poor, the housing was poor and the clothing was poor, three basic things. But what I noticed in that story is Lazarus' poverty did not drive him uh, into committing crimes. And I think that's a very powerful story. In fact, when um, Lazarus died, he found himself in um, Father Abraham's bosom. So what, what we have to understand here, as much as theorists will want to say poverty or economic condition drives people uh, into a crime situation, we have to begin to carry a message. Uh, we have to begin to carry a message that your poverty ought not necessarily to drive you to deprive other people of their property. Um, whether it is your, their flat screen TV or their phone or their iPod or their computer. You don't have to, st you don't have to steal people's uh, property because you can't afford it um, on your own. We, we, you need to stop that. Lazarus had inadequate housing, inadequate shelter, inadequate f nutrition, and he did not, as far as the Bible is concerned, deprive other people of their property. Listen, we don't have enough time on this program to delve into all the nitty-gritty that we want to delve into related to poverty and crime. Uh, the, the premise that I wanted to lay out here is that uh, some have theorized that poverty is what is going to cause crime or an escalation in property crime. If you come back to prescription window in the upcoming week, we are going to take um, a more acute look at this issue of relating poverty to crime and to see how that correlates here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And maybe if in addressing poverty, we can make a dent in the crime situation. We just want to thank you for your regular visits to the Prescription Window, certainly for staying with us throughout this program. Prescription Window is brought to you by the Kingston Baptist Church. We are located at the southern entrance to the Botanical Garden. The Kingston Baptist Church is a vibrant, vibrant 
growing church and very involved in the community. In fact, I want to make you aware of something that is coming up um, in the upcoming week here on the 15th and the 16th of May. That's Wednesday the 15th and Thursday the 16th of May. We are teaming up with a team of b-ballers, basketballers coming out of um, the US of A, Georgia. These are college champs, uh, um, national college champs uh, in the NCAA Division II. They're, they're the national champions and they're sending their men's team and they're sending down their women's team to work with us. They're going to be playing against a Federation 12 um, on the men's side and a Federation 12 on the women's side both evenings. Um, they're going to be pitting the Vincentians against this um, national this, uh, team from the US of A. And we're inviting the ent entire community to go out. KBC just wants to relate to you and to get to know our community. And, um, you know, we are doing it um, in a kind of out-of-the-box way. Uh, we are not going up and knocking on doors and all of that. But we will meet you at the hard court. Uh, that's right down there, um, right below CWSA. And, again, we will see you 6.30 on Wednesday evening and 6.30 again on the Thursday evening. Come, you will love it. Um, a bunch of us are going to be there. Of course, the very popular Alfonso Sleepy Richards will be lighting up the crowd. And um, a whole lot of stuff is going to be going on. So we want to see you there. And then we want to give you an invite, give you an invitation to join us um, at the church on Sundays from 10 in the morning, every Sunday from 10 in the morning, um, for some exciting, vibrant worship of God. Uh, until we see you at the church, at the game, or at the prescription window. May God bless you. Lord, you are so amazing Lord, you are so amazing Lord, you are strong and mighty